today we're going to be talking about operations with matrices and really introducing you guys to the concept of matri matrices. So matrix is a way to organize data and a lot of students think about it like an Excel spreadsheet. The dimensions of matrix, say this is matrix A, we use a capital letter, is we first give the number of rows. The rows are like rows in Excel rows in an Excel spreadsheet. So that's there's two rows by three columns. And I have a little reminder here of RC cola. You first do rows, then you do columns. The entry is a, is any of these data points in our matrices. So if we're talking about 17.318, the address for that is a little a, and then you first give the row, row 1, column 3. Okay, our first example. Use matrix M to answer the questions below. What are the, what are the dimensions of matrix M? Remember our little hint here, RC cola. How many rows do we have? Remember that's going down like rows in an Excel spreadsheet. So I have three rows by four columns. So our dimensions are three by four. Now what is the entry of row three, column two. So row one, two, three, column two, that's 11. And then zero appears in what two addresses? Well, zero is in row, row one, column four, and row two, column three. row one, column four, and row two, column three. Okay, we want to organize this data into a matrix. And yes, I want you guys to write this down. As always, we write down every example. So we have Iowa State University, that's ISU, University of Iowa and University of Northern Iowa. And there are certain things, her tuition, her room and board, and her enrollment, and the enrollment for the school, I should say, that we're going to organize into a matrix, and then we're going to do a few operations with that matrix. Okay. ISU's tuition. ISU's tuition is 6,160. Room and board for ISU is 5,958. And our enrollment, 26,160. And then just keep organizing as we go along. So matrices, as you can tell, are a way to organize data from word problems or things that you might, might organize in an Excel spreadsheet. Okay, make sure you have this matrix, matrix written down because I'm going to use it for our next slide. Okay, find the average of the elements in column one. So column one was our tuition. Column of our three universities. So remember average is you take all of the elements, you add them together,
and you divide by 3. So when I do that, we get 59.53 and interpret the results. So tell me what that means. Well, we averaged our tuition column. So that's the average tuition. So you can pretty much think about it like you're explaining your parents how much you would pay for on average between the three universities. All right, would adding the elements of the rows provide meaningful data? So remember the rows were each one of the universities. Well, think about it. If you added, remember our rows, we had tuition, we had ISU, which we had tuition, and then we had room and board, and then we had enrollment. So if I added together tuition, room and board, that would help us out. But enrollment, that wouldn't be meaningful. So no. If we added together the first two columns, that would help us tell how much we're going to have to pay, would give us cost. Adding an enrollment wouldn't help. If we added an enrollment, that wouldn't help us out at all. Now, would adding the elements of the third column provide meaningful data? Remember, enrollment, adding up the enrollment between the three schools? No. That would just give us enrollment between the two between the schools. I should say let's do total enrollment. Okay, adding and subtracting matrices. In order to add and subtract two matrices, they have to have the same dimensions. And yes, you're writing this down. Okay, you're adding if they have the two matrices. And you add and subtract their corresponding elements. So, first column, first row, those are the ones you're going to add together. And so on and so forth. So, our example at the bottom, we'll first pause the video write down this in terms of symbols and then our example at the bottom is you add together the three and the two so your answer and I'm gonna put it below is gonna be five add the negative five and the zero that's negative five the one and the negative nine that's gonna be negative eight and then if we add the seven and a ten that's going to be 17. So you're adding together the like entries of the each one of the matrices. Okay, next example. Again, add together the like things. So A plus B, 6 plus a negative 3. Well, that's going to be a positive 3. A negative 1 plus a 0, that's a negative 1. 4 plus 1 is 5. 0 plus 3 is 3. Now, subtract these matrices. Do these matrices have the same dimension? A is a 3 by 2 matrix, and B is a 2 by 2 matrix. All of the dimensions aren't the same, so we would put not possible. Our dimensions are 
aren't equal. All the dimensions have to be equal when we're adding or subtracting. Okay, multiplying by scalar. Scalar, that's a new term for you guys. Scalar is basically multiplying by some sort of coefficient or some number. So if you're multiplying by a number, you just take and you multiply the number into each one of the elements. So for our example here, we would just take the 3 and multiply it to each one of the elements, leaving the elements where they're at. So we would have negative 12, negative 21, negative 3, and a positive 6. Some other properties that you guys need to keep in mind. You've been doing a lot of writing, so I'll let you guys, you don't have to write this bottom piece down. But keep in mind these different properties. What you can do, you have the commutative property of addition, so it doesn't matter when you are adding how you add. And then associative property turns out to be the same thing. And then a scalar, you can multiply the scalar inside to each one of the matrices and then add them together. And either way, the scalar can be on the other side of the matrices. Okay, our next example, we need to find 4a minus 3b. So first I would recommend us finding 4a. If I find 4a, 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 3 is 12, 4 times a is negative 4, 4 times 0 is 0. 3b, I'm going to multiply by a positive 3 so I don't forget to multiply by a negative. I have a negative 6, 0, 3, and negative 3. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to subtract 8 minus a negative 6. Now be careful on that one. 8 minus a negative 6 is 14. 12 minus 3 is 9. Negative 4 minus 0, negative 4. 0 minus a negative 3 is a positive 3. So be careful when you're subtracting. What you could have done is you could have also multiplied by negative 3 on matrix B and then added if you wanted. Okay, that's it for today's lesson. I just want you guys to do those two lesson questions for me. First one is multiple choice, and then the second one you're going to give me the entry for that matrix.